Welcome to the Empowered Podcast, episode 21. My podcast is now old enough to drink. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of the Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Ellery Wells, and this is the mostly weekly podcast designed to help you develop, grow, and overcome the challenges that you are facing in your life today. I'm excited to share today's podcast with you. My guest is Maron Barraquette. I hope I said his name right, and I know it's a good episode because when Ashley was helping me edit it, she couldn't stop laughing. Uh, I was sitting in the other room reading a book, getting ready for my big mastermind meeting that I'm starting with a new group of leaders from tomorrow. And she was in the office uh, listening to the podcast, and every once in a while I'd hear a laugh. And whenever she laughs, I know we've got some good content. Before we head into the episode, I just wanted to invite you to connect with me on Twitter. You can find me at Empowered Ellery, or you can find me on Facebook. Whichever one is your preference or your social platform of preference, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com slash empowering the 80%. I look forward to hanging out with you and connecting with you over the next few weeks. Without further delay, we'll go right into the interview. Stick around at the end and I'll give you a taste of what's coming up on the next episode of the Empowered Podcast. Thank you for tuning in to the Empowered Podcast. I'm your host, Ellery Wells, and today I have the honor to share a conversation with Maron Barraquette of Inspiring Innovation, the magazine, and the podcast. And he's quite possibly one of the furthest interviewees uh, away from me. I'm in Texas, and he's in Israel. How are you doing today, Maron? I'm great. Thank you for allowing me the honor of being on your show and talking to your audience, my friend. And I think you had a, a more, a bigger challenge to say your own name than mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we, we both have very unique names and uh, I'm very particular and I, I try to do my absolute best when saying names. It's like your brand. So I want to make sure I get it right. You, <laughs> so, did, but yeah. well. you did well, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. So it's, Right now, it's about 10.30 in the morning here in Texas, and that means it's about 6.30 in the evening where you are. Tell us a little bit about where you are and what you're up to. Okay, so I'm joining you from Lake Galilee, Israel, which is probably one of the most famous places, so I, don't, I won't do too much introduction for where I'm living, born and raised in Israel. These days, I run the Inspiring Innovation podcast and magazine aiming at inspiring people to live up to their full potential and pursue their entrepreneurial calling and create their own journey in this life. So I think it's much like what you're doing here. So that's that's a good synergy. Um, so that's what I'm up to, basically. Now, you had mentioned to me when we were we – were chatting just a few minutes ago that you started or did you start these the inspiring innovation brand shortly after you were in a car accident right um not exactly so or is that something else i'll I'll give you the quick version and then we can dig into whatever part you like so at 16 years old i went to college or i was even not not even 16 i went to get my bachelor degree at 17 years old, I had a car accident that um, kept me doing physiotherapy for the next two years. And I wasn't able to sleep at all. Uh, I would lay awake in bed for 72 hours. And in those days, wow. I, I didn't do much besides laying awake in bed. So I consumed a ton of audiobooks that finally inspired me to do something. So I started a software business. Um, down the road, it didn't do quite well. I had to go into the corporate world to make ends meet. Um, and I didn't, I, I, I couldn't stay in corporate world. I, it, it was not for me. Um, so I left, and when I left, I decided that I will inspire other people that are as um, 
I wouldn't say I, I want to say as miserable. That's what I thought by, back then. But basically, people that want to make <laughs> a big change in their life mm -hmm. uh, to inspire them to do so by spreading the word word of the people that inspired me to do so. And that's what gave birth to inspiring innovation. So the whole process in that's 10 years in 10 seconds. <laughs> okay. Was you'd mentioned an audio book that that kind of turned things around for you? Is there do you remember what it was called? Um well Think and Grow Rich mm, yeah. definitely impacted me. Um and it was the one with the intro by Napoleon Hill himself, which was cool. Oh wow. Um what else? Um Dale Carnegie was a good one. Um how to win friends and influence people. I think that's the name of it. Uh, I don't know. I read so, I listened to so many books at the time. Uh, so I really don't remember. For our work week, of course. Um, yeah, I don't know. I can give you my best recommendations for anyone starting now, but <laughs> I don't remember sure. all the audio books. Um, right now I'm loving um, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. Uh, have you read it? I actually read that while I was in Costa Rica. And if there's one thing that's highly motivating, it's being in the jungles of Costa Rica on vacation and reading a book telling you that you're awesome and you need to get your message out to the world. <laughs> Very <laughs> so, true. Yes, so, yes. And I just read his follow-up book, uh, Going Pro. Have you checked that one out? I'm halfway through. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we may talk about that one too. What What else? Um, what else? So for our work week, even though it oversimplifies and makes everybody expect that within four months, you're going to be filthy rich and it doesn't seem to work that way. But the four hour work week is one of the building blocks of this, I don't know, modern age entrepreneurship. So definitely <laughs> worth a read. Um, what else did I like recently? Love yourself like life depends on it by Kamal Ravikant, one of my favorite people on planet earth and favorite authors. Um, geez, what did I read recently that I loved? Hmm. It'll come back to me now that, now that I'm on the spot. Um, <laughs> I know what you mean. My, my brain is empty, but, <laughs> but these are a few great That's right. uh, to start with. Definitely, um, read, oh, the go giver by Bob Berg, the okay. small army strategy by Srini Rao. I think I gave enough to, to get started. <laughs> yeah. And I, like I said, we, I've read the war of art and I just got the four hour work week in the mail Monday, maybe. Awesome. So, and so I'm just starting it. I feel like I'm six years late to the game on that one, but um, well, here's you know, the thing, uh, for our work week, the, the principles still stand. And the only thing you need to understand when you read it is that it's not as easy as Tim makes it seem, you know, it's a book, it needs to sell copies. Um, but the principles still stand. Yeah. And some of those, hopefully this will become one of those classic books. I think it already kind of has, Ooh. but like you mentioned, and before you thinking forget, of them, uh, Pat Flynn's one, I can't Let remember. Go? Let go. Yeah. That that's a must read. I, uh, I'm not too far into that one. I got it uh, on the Kindle and, and haven't finished that one yet too, but I'll put that also in the show notes. Awesome. So go give her, uh, let go, love yourself. Like your life depends on it. I have not heard of that one, but I'll check that one out. And then, four hour work week and work of art. And like I was saying, the the four hour work week seems to kind of transcended a little bit. It's kind of become this huge book and, and kind of movement. And like you were saying, the principles stand the test of time and thinking grow rich and how to win friends and influence people have both done the same thing where some of the tactics, the actual tasks that you do may not be as relevant today as they were six years ago or was it 80 years ago when those other books came out? But the principles definitely are, right. are still I mean, applicable. Yeah. The four hour work week will tell you about validating with Google AdWords and some other networks that don't exist anymore. But okay, there's Facebook ads. I mean, the, the principles still mm -hmm. stand. It's, it's just a matter of understanding what's a principle and what 
just applied to when the book was written, basically. Speaking of, of along those lines, have you picked up or heard about Gary Vaynerchuk's jab, 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 right hook? I'm looking forward to reading it. I, I, I still haven't, I don't know if it's available as a Kindle version at all. Um, uh, it, it it is, and I only know that because Gary tweeted out a picture of the Amazon bestsellers, and number one was his book, and number three was the Kindle version of the book. Uh, so it awesome. should be. So uh, I'm 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 making up my mind. Do I want to get the Kindle version or the full blown version? Which of course means shipping it to Israel, which is a, <laughs> a bit of a problem uh, because I've heard it's such a beautiful book to read. Um, I've heard his interview with it's heavy too. this week. Yeah, which you know, there's there's all the case studies, etc. I don't know if reading it on a black and white Kindle <laughs> would do the job. Um, but I heard that's it's, a great it's point. Spot on. I heard it's really, really good. Well, I it's it takes me back to my college days. Um, but although I read more now than when I was in college, it's funny how that works, <laughs> but it's, uh, the pages are kind of laminated like a, a college book is, and I'm going through and I'm highlighting everything. I'm only about 15 pages into it, but I'm really, it, it I'm, I'm excited about it. I'm from Pat Flynn's interview with him, like you just mentioned, uh, which I will link to. Uh, I'm starting to implement some of the social media strategies on my Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn about putting an image, a quote, my logo and embedding some of those things. I'm going to have to give you a good quote then. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I'll Lay think it out about for it. Me. No, I'll have to think okay, about okay. it. You have to come naturally. But now, you there know, you the, 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 there's a lot of pressure now. Um, yeah, that's a great yeah. interview. Yeah, the, the, the bar is set pretty high. I've had some pretty... <laughs> Pretty awesome guess, and and you'll definitely fit right in. But the bar is set high for quotes. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> no pressure, no <laughs> pressure at all. So, I wanted to, want to talk a little bit about this software business that you started while you were while you were in the hospital. Even though it didn't really take off and you know launch you to internet fame, most I'd say ninety nine percent of the world haven't started their own, maybe even business, but it's specifically a software business, specifically not at 17 or so years old. Uh, what was what was that like? How did you figure out what it did and maybe um, why you decided to move on to something else? Okay, so um, I'll just correct that I wasn't in hospital for two years. I was actually at my parents' place. I went okay. back home from college and I was basically in my childhood room for the next two years um which, which wasn't necessarily as bad as it sounds like i consider myself privileged to have been given two years vacation from life just to reflect and watch and um you know all a lot of life's dramas seem less dramatic less important um when you take a step back so it was very interesting experience my studies at the time were for a bachelor degree in computer sciences and being a rather skillful programmer starting a pro like a software development company was pretty obvious to me it was just the one thing i was the best at and the one thing it was easiest to do and the one thing i could do from bed like as long as i had a laptop i didn't need anything else so I don't think there was that much thought put into it. It was just obvious. And I looked around and I asked myself, what can I offer? What makes money, but I can make, like, what market is already making money, but can be improved? And at the time, all, everybody, all my neighbors, they, many of them were small business owners or my parents' neighbors, Many of them were small business owners that didn't even have a website. So I realized, okay, they don't have a website. Why don't they have a website? Probably because they don't know how to build one. So I deducted that what the world needs is a simple to use content management system. At the time, WordPress was just getting started. So I ended up competing against them and we all know who won. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, so that was it. I, I was getting customers, putting them on the system, showing them how to use the system. Um, it didn't work because I got some bad advice that I took. And because the premise of the product was wrong, it turned out that those people didn't have a website because they didn't have, they didn't know how to write or what to write. They didn't know how to create content. It wasn't the system they were missing. It was the content they were missing. So they were never happy. I was never happy. And combine that with bad business advice and you end up in a bad place. <laughs> yeah. I, I've talked to a lot of, a lot of people here on the podcast. And one of the things that all these successful people do is surround themselves with the right people and get the right type of advice. So getting the wrong type of advice or bad advice, uh, yeah, I could definitely lead, lead in the wrong direction. Yeah, well, I thought I was like, it was an advice from an, a potential angel investor. So someone who has achieved stuff in life, etc. And you made a great point. We should surround ourselves by people that are smarter than us and that can give us good advice. But we need to remember that it's still our responsibility to judge their advice. It's still our responsibility to ask ourselves, does this really make sense? Does this correlate with who I am, with who my business, with what I want my business to be? And that's our responsibility, even if we are surrounded by others, because everybody's human and everybody gives sometimes bad advice. Yeah, I, I don't want to say it was bad advice. But I didn't give the the uh, the best advice to a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. I told him, you know, I was like, rah rah rah, you know, go for it, fight back, and he, that wasn't the best <laughs> uh, best advice. He got got better advice from somebody else about getting a plan and you know having a backup plan in in place before taking my advice and, and just charging forward. So, um, yeah, bad bad advice sometimes happens before i get to about what you're doing now with, with inspiring innovations is it common for people to go for a, a college degree at age 16 over there or were you just ahead of your time a little bit um no it's very uncommon because in israel uh, you generally can't even apply to college before you're 18 and when you're 18 you go to the army so usually people don't get to college before 22. So how'd you, how'd you do that? Um, I saw a breach in the system. Uh, I realized that the only purpose of their matriculation exams in Israel for like the exams you take at the end of high school is that they can give you grades by which you will be judged when you apply for college. And so I figured, well, if I apply to college before I'm old enough to take these exams and I can prove to them I'm worthy and I get a uh, college degree, then no one will care about the fact that I never finished high school. And it turned out that <laughs> that loophole actually works. Did you end up finishing high school? So here's the funny thing. I never finished high school because I went to college <laughs> but you right went away. To... Oh. Um, they told me, we'll give you their, the, the, hardest course there is for a first year student in computer science and if you do well we'll see and i was lucky that the lecturer on that course was a on the committee that decides who gets accepted and b was the head of the israeli project to i don't know how they call it but like they were they were scouting for mathematic talent in israel so it was a course in mathematics. I did well. He thought he can grow me into this math genius, which I never became. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, um, so they accepted me. It was, you know, it was tact, tact, there was tactics to it. I mean, I applied to a specific college that was near home, but also wasn't necessarily, it wasn't a top. 500 university or something like that. So of course a major university probably wouldn't have to like, it didn't 
it wouldn't work if I'd applied to Stanford um, without finishing high school. Um, so there was some tactics and strategy involved. And then, of course, on my last semester, I had a car accident. I never even finished my degree. Oh, wow. That was going to be my next question to see if you had finished. Well, that's a funny thing because I was sitting for two years, as I said. And at some stage, I realized, A, when I'm doing business, no one cares about my credentials. No one cares yeah. if I finished high school or college. Yeah. Or, it didn't yeah. make it. I never got even asked. I was like, if I'm going to, if I'm talking to investors and they don't give a damn, then why should I give a damn? So that was one. Second thing was realizing that most of what is taught in college is outdated in the field of computer science. So there was really no point in that. And then, you know, I looked at it and said, well, you can, you can say that the only reason for you to get a bachelor degree is if you want to go on and get a master degree later. And I didn't want a master degree at the time. So I was very comfortable with just letting go. Yeah. That's part of it. The other part was that I was, um, my grades were at the top 1% of the entire college and I probably was scared oh. to go back. That's also part <laughs> of it. Um, but I just moved on. Have you thought about going back and finishing and going for that master's degree now? No. Like, I, I, have, I have family members who are people of education. Um, one of them is a professor in, in Cambridge University. And she asked me, how come uh, someone like me doesn't want to finish any of my studies? And I told her, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not objecting it. I'm not against it. When the time will come where, where I will find something that I want to study out of interest, there's a good chance I'll do it. Right now, I'm in a more of a doing place. And as long as I can do without having the certificate on the wall, I refuse to waste my effort, time and money just to get that certificate. I think one of the most relevant quotes that really hits home for me is Einstein's quote, don't let your schooling get in the way of your education. Yeah. And I, I wrote a, yeah, I, I wrote a blog post. Uh, I was trying to get some attention and I did. And my mom and I talked about it. My mom's got a bachelor's degree, I think a master's degree and a PhD and all, she's got the alphabet at the end of her name. And so she and I talked about it. You know, the amount of money and time investment that you spend to get the certificate, um, you know, is it is it worth it today? And my blog post was how to get a college degree for all, or college education. I used the word education on purpose, a college education for almost uh, for almost free. You know, with YouTube, Cambridge probably has a YouTube channel. Harvard and Yale have YouTube channels with podcasts like like yours, and hopefully uh, mine earns the right to to be along, along with that. But you can get the education out there where for for free or close to free with with books and things. You don't necessarily have to spend four years or five years and, you know, in the state, I don't even know how much Cambridge would cost. It's probably a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, to go to get yeah, the it, certificate. It, it, I think you're right on. And, and you know, S Steve Jobs said that in his case, it only when he decided to, he called it dropping in. So he stopped his studies and only started going to what interested him. And then he found out, he found, um, the science of typography, which he attributes the fact that we have beautiful fonts today to the fact that he gave up on his studies and only started going to what was interesting for him. And I think the world will be such a different place if all the people that are, that had to go to college and get all, I know in the US, it's a huge, um, you have to take huge loans and, and, and you get into very deep debt. Like if all these people were living debt free and have only learned what interest and inspire them, what a different world would we have? I completely, completely agree with you. Well, we only have nine minutes or so before, uh, before you have a hard stop. Can you give us a couple minutes on inspiring innovation? Uh, you mentioned 
uh, course, or I think we might have talked about it before, that you're working on. Can you give us a, an overview of what that is? So Inspire Innovation is an interview-based show where we go through the venture of a successful entrepreneur from the beginning, from the hardships, through the challenges, much, much like you do here, and to the success, trying to really extract the lessons. And unlike most interview shows out there, most episodes are 40 minutes long at least, uh, averaging 45 minutes to an hour. The reason is not because I like wasting time, but because I found that that is the time it takes to really get to the gold nuggets, to really create a conversation where people reveal stuff they never revealed before. So that's Inspiring Innovation, which you can find at inspiring-innovation.com. Now, I started as a magazine and then I launched a podcast and the podcast did so well that I realized that for many of my listeners, starting their own podcast would be a huge opportunity because they could build an engaged audience of thousands within weeks without blogging, without SEO, without a big mm -hmm. budget. And mm -hmm. that's the product I'm building now. It's going to be a free video bootcamp walking people through how to build this engaged audience, as I said, without SEO, without blogging, without budget, within weeks. And wow. I'm, I'm taking the angle of just-in-time training, so you don't learn stuff you don't need, and it's not a technical course. There is enough of technical knowledge out there about podcasting. I think it now is the time to create, to show people how to start podcasting for people who are not the technical type of people, but their word has to be spread. Will that be inspiring-innovation.com or you have a new site for that? So the bootcamp is going to be at bootcamp. Let me think. I think it's bootcamp.inspiring-innovation.com or inspiring-innovation.com forward slash bootcamp probably. Um, I'll, I'll give you the link, um, offline. It's going to launch soon. If you go there now, you can join the list that will get emailed once we do launch. As I said, it's going to be a hundred percent free because I want to give That's back awesome. to this amazing ecosystem of podcasting that has helped me reach my audience. And I, I see what people who listen to inspiring innovation do in their lives. And it almost brings me to tears to realize that I have the honor of inspiring innovation in their lives. So I just want this mechanism that I have found to work for other people. Yeah, that's awesome. Because to your, I mean, this conversation that we're having and, you know, you as a listener are, are, are getting to eavesdrop on would never have happened without being on a podcast, you know? I've been blogging for a couple of years. I never would have met anybody in Israel, you know, if I'd just been typing on my keyboard, but through Skype and recording through Pamela and the internet, we can have a conversation when you're literally on the other side of the world and we can, we can learn about each other, share experiences and, and have a lot of fun and all because of, of a podcast. Yeah. You said it. So, um, being on the Empowered podcast, you may have guessed that we would talk a little bit about empowering other people. What does the word empower mean to you? Huh. Wow. You should have gave me <laughs> some a heads up. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tough question incoming. Um, give someone the power to pursue his deeper meaning. Okay. Uh, I, I like that. Um, does... Does that have a special meaning to you? There, it seems like when you said, well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you. Well, I don't like the word empower because okay. of the way it's been used in, um, you know, all managers in corporate know they need to empower their employees, etc. It doesn't mean anything for too many people. It's just a buzzword for in all in all too many circles. So I agree. I guess I just took it back to what I want to see people do when they talk about empowering 
if it makes sense. And it's not the the superficial. Oh yeah, I'm going to empower you to do this. It's I like I like the word you use, deeper meaning. You know the internal power that people have within them. Yeah, I, I took the side of power more than M. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. What is the, and, and maybe this maybe this is a question that you won't like because of what we just talked about. But what is the best way to empower other people, or can you empower other people? Well. That's a good question. Um, let's get back to this one. I'll give it a thought. <laughs> okay. Okay. When you decided to do what you're doing now, the inspiring innovation, you know, with the with the car accident and not finishing school, what types of resistance did you face? Maybe from yourself, from your family, or friends. So my family didn't really understand. To this day, doesn't really understand what am I doing and why am I wasting my time on this instead of getting uh, some job at a startup company. Um, so I just tell them less and less about what I do. Uh, limiting beliefs were a huge part of my resistance. Uh, being afraid to ask for an interview, like I was, I think it took me almost four or five weeks to send Pat Flynn, my first interviewee, or, um, a pitch to interview him. Um, and limiting beliefs at doing this product that I'm doing now. I, ke I kept, I had the idea for months, but I kept saying to everybody around me that, well, this and that already has a product about how to podcast and this and that has a product and this and that has a product. And it took me a long time to realize that Although that is true, none of them is me. And as long as you pour your authentic self into the product, and as Bob Berg sa said in, in our interview, when I interviewed him, your, your, your advantage over your competition is you. And as long as you pour you, you in, um, then it has a place. It has value. And... I like so, that. so that was a limiting belief I had to definitely overcome, and I still, I still fight. Um, being a perfectionist, which I think is a is a way. Re that's really over the last two weeks I've been realizing that I've been using um, my perfectionism as a way to not say that I'm afraid. So I fear of failure, so I try to perfect stuff. So oh, yeah. fear of failure is a huge resistance. Um, I'd love to say I overcame it. I don't think I did. But um, I think the best way to get started with getting over fear of failure, I learned that from Noah Kagan from AppSumo, is to march to your nearest Starbucks. And when they give you coffee, ask for a 10% discount. And <laughs> it's funny because, you know, it's it's... I heard that. It feels almost pathetic to ask for a discount over, I don't know how much it costs in the US um, to get a cup of coffee, but like it's not a very expensive thing to, that is worthy of a discount request. And there's a huge chance not only you'll be rejected, your, your request will be rejected, but also that they will look at you strange for thinking of asking for a discount over a cup of coffee. Like, what's the discount? 50 cents? 20 cents? Um, and that challenge took me quite some time to try. I never managed to get a discount of a cup of coffee. Um, I still try from time to time just to keep that, um, uh, muscle of uh, <laughs> resistance at bay. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I've never asked. So I usually make my coffee at home though. I know we're right at the end of our, our time and I, w I don't want to, uh, to go too far over, but do you have one tip or piece of advice that you can give to people like me who are just, just starting out just on the, the edge of, of breakthrough or the edge of taking the first step? Yeah. So my advice would be don't expect it to be easy. It's not going to be easy. It's not going to be quick. It's not going to be obvious. It is going to be challenging. It is going to be tough. It is going to be, um, sometimes devastatingly tough, which is why such a little amount of people do it. 
this is why they call it resistance for a good reason. There's a huge resistance until you make it. And I by no means have made it yet. Um, and, and that's the point. Just accept that it's not going to be easy and just do it anyway. And just like the famous Ford quote, whether, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. Yeah, that's a there. There's your there's your quote from Henry Ford. Whether you think you can, or you can't, you're right. Marin, thanks for taking time to be on the show. I know it's getting a little bit later in the evening there. If you, we wanted to connect with you on social media, where's a good place that we can do that? Uh, Twitter would be best place at Maron Bereket. We'll probably put it in the show notes because it's a little bit hard to spell. I guess. Um, Twitter or my website, there's a contact form there. If you join the mailing list, you'll have my personal email. I answer all of my emails myself. Um, so any of these will be a great way. Awesome. And yes, those all of those will be in the show notes. So you can, after the episode's over, if you want to head right over to empoweringthe80percent.com, I don't know what episode this will be, in, but you can find the show notes. So again, thank you. Have a wonderful evening. You too, my friend. Thank you so much for having me. Now that interview was a perfect example of why you always need a backup plan. As soon as I ended the interview with Maron, I looked at my Pamela uh, call recording software and I realized that I had not been recording anything after about the first three or four minutes and I, it, it was pretty humbling, you know, I, I, I've made several mistakes while doing this podcast, but I have never completely just uh, had a technical error that eliminated the recording uh, entirely. And I was lucky to have uh, someone as knowledgeable and technologically wise as Maran, who had also recorded it. And so Maran, when you listen to this, thank you again for doing your diligence recording the podcast from your end and then sending it to me so that i could share it with my listeners today so again lesson learned uh you know always have (laughs) always have a backup plan thank you for listening to the episode today we'll talk to you next time and here's a taste of what's coming up on our next episode keep plowing ahead you keep moving forward and you never give up you just have faith in your own ability to make a difference and to succeed.